If I say, you know, the beginning of the year, I made a lot of decisions, but, uh, you know, somewhat it's not gone well, you know, somewhere down the line, I can see till uh, July month, you know, spiritually not, not much I able to do because of my work pressure and all, of, all those things. And uh, going to Kerala, it is, uh, uh, the nearest retreat, it's really helped me, you know, talking to, away from all the distractions, sitting with the brothers, you know, sharing about my life and taking some, you know, uh, help and also making some decision, you know. Always, uh, you know, when I make decision, you know, I'm not able to continue it. That is the one thing I lack. It was not consistent, whatever decision I take. But this time I made a decision, you know, spiritual decision and also I took a decision like I will pass for non veg for 40 days. This is uh, a decision why I made. You know, so that I will be reminded about my spiritual decision. Oh, and so that actually really helped me, you know. And after coming back, one thing I decided, you know, I will start praying with the brothers in my ministry. You know, so we started praying, one brother in Chile started coming. You know, I started praying with him. Then slowly other brothers also started joining, you know. So in Chile when we started the prayer, it was on the main road, you know. We used to sit in front of a shop, you know. As time goes, you know, people started walking, a lot of distraction. You know, in our heart we are desiring, you know, if we get a good place, it would be wonder, you know. Uh, then uh, slowly we moved from that main road to end of that road, there was a vacant land. You know, we arranged some stone and all, because we used to do some Bible studies and all there. So we arranged it, but before us only many people used to come there, you know, doing their daily routine and all. You know, so it was sometimes, you know, a lot of smell, you know, sometimes we have to uh, clean up the place. You know all those things, but we want to pursue you now this meeting together because we don't not find any good place where we can meet together without all you know without any distractions. You know again we are hoping if we get some other good place it will be good. Then the same line we end of that cross we saw another one big house and he got a uh, you know big compound in his house. Now we slowly moved up there you know our prayer and Bible study and everything. You know this house owner came and saw us. You know he looked at us, you know, then uh, he didn't say anything, so we thought, okay, you know, you won't say anything, like, continued, we continued there only. Now, as days goes, uh, you know, uh, he started, you know, putting, uh, you know, bringing some mud, then stone and wire, uh, you know, steel wire and all those things. Suddenly, one day, the compound came up, and we wanted to go inside, and uh, there is a gate also locked. You know, we thought, uh, maybe, you know, we won't be allowed you know, anymore there. So anyway, we came, let us sit here and pray. You know, while praying, he came out of the house and said, Pray, you guys are sitting here. Why don't you come inside? You know, because the way I put the gate, because cows and all coming inside, that's the reason I put the gate. <laughs> and he allowed us to come inside. And as days goes, you know, he turned that place into an amazing or small park with the garden. Wow. You know, and also he arranged, you know, small benches, you know, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it is a stone made uh, for us to sit and pray and study the Bible. You know? And also, Christmas time, he, you know, given us a lot of gifts. In New Year, he given us a lot of gifts. You know, it is amazing. And this prayer, it really helped us, actually. You know, coming together as a brothers. You know, we have our, most of the, you know, meeting happen in the morning time itself. You know, when sister was in our ministry and she is asking us to reach out to her husband, you know, he was addicted to alcohol, morning he will start, you know, even night he come back, he shout at people, a lot of things he was using, doing, his name is Bala Murli Krishna, you know, and he's from, a, you know, he, they have their own temple, his sister is a priest in that temple, you know, so they used to, uh, you know, uh, he was part of that, this thing, and what was amazed me is, you know, he's he, before that, before the prayer, we approached him many times, but he not showed his interest to study the Bible or anything. Even he was not ready to come out of the house also. What the excuse he was feeling, I'm having asthma, mm -hmm. this is a cold season, if I come, you know, it will be more, I don't want to come out. You know, once we started this prayer, I, it's amazingly, you know, how God uh, opened his heart. You know, he started coming and we started studying the Bible. He showed his willingness to study the Bible and he got baptized. You know, this day is really amazing, you know, it's a uh, it's challenge for many of us, you know, amazing this guy is, you know, every week he will have two or three, you know, visitors, 
No, not only from our area, he will all over the Bangalore, even from <laughs> Banargata, he got some visitors, Banswadi, he got some visitors. And seeing his life change, you know, in the bus and all, he will drink and go every day, morning. You know, a lot of the people uh, don't want to come close to him. You know, one of his friends saw him, you know, there is some changes, he's starting about talking about God and all those things. You know, he got inspired and he started coming. You know, his name was, uh, you know, Gendidesh, uh, you know, he's from Achar background. You know, he started uh, coming and studying the Bible. This also happened in the morning ministry early. You know, morning we all meet together and, you know, and he studied the Bible. He also gone through a lot of persecution. His wife told if you are, you can get baptized only after your uh, daughter's marriage. You know, otherwise you please don't come home because we have to face our own relatives and all. This brother packed everything. You know, for the baptism day, you want to go. You know, separately he came with the package. You know, but uh, after the after the baptism, his uh, you know, five forty called. Where are you? Come, come home. You know, called. You know, he gone through a lot. You know, still he is going through a lot. But I can see, you know, amazingly he is pursuing. And also, you know, this brother got inspired and he started sharing his faith. And another brother, he is a Catholic background, you know, this guy from a Hindu background started sharing about Jesus, it's, you know, amazed him also. He thought, you know, how come he is talking about Jesus, let me know what these people are doing, you know. So he also started coming there and he also joined our group, you know, he started studying the Bible with him. You know, it took long time because he has a lot of questions and all those things, but finally, you know, he also made it and, you know, it's all we can see, you know, God's incredible hand you know on all this baptism and whatever good things happen there now i remember coming back four years back from east to moving into central region uh, decided not to do any ministry giving excuse of my wife is carrying a second child and i had a lot of travel my job so that's the excuse that i made to think and then stayed back not doing ministry and there was a need that uh, finally that now we have to step in and take a response we are being Marriage ministry. Uh, no, this is the ministry that I, I, I had the toughest and challenging ministry I ever led in the life. <laughs> you know? I think 95 uh, percent of the strength of this group, either they are the ex ministers, they were in the staff, or they were the mission initiative members leading churches, like a <coughs> priest and chief priest there. Me as a leader, it took really a long time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what really helped me leading this Banaswadi marriage was uh, definitely for every little thing that I want to do, whether it's a topic of the lesson that I want to do, the discussion, the scripture sharing, I always consult the Lord and ask God to give me wisdom and then go to it. <laughs> so, I mean, that was exciting. I think two years I was able to view the group, lead them, and uh, now the time that I moved in, one thing I noticed in the group was people filled with bitterness of different things that they've gone through in life and, and there are a lot of painful stories as well. So that was the discussion, that was the topic whenever people come together. Now we all made a decision and pledged together and listen, we will never going to talk anything about <coughs> negative over the church and about the people. We will discourage those habits. And that's the step you take in it and I think over the period, it was not easy, but over the period people start avoiding this discussion in the ministry. So that was poisoning people, that was troubling many other Christians as well. And that I could see that happening. And people slowly could able to forget the bitterness and, and, and understand that is whatever happened, God allowed it to happen and amen, they would continue forward in life. Uh, so that was a great opportunity for me to be in that group. And then this year after uh, almost two years of ministry, they were uh, called to do a teens ministry year. Uh, because there's a different challenge altogether to come up and take this responsibility because I have no qualification of leading teens. The only thing qualification I have is I was baptized in the team. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, and then I just talked to my mentor that like, what do you think about this? And it's, I said, listen, I think there's some things we have experienced as a team, and, then, and these children also are going to go through the same <coughs> challenges, and they don't want to make the same mistakes. So I said, we are people going to go and work with them and help Come them on. to get strengthened through the scriptures, and they're going to be a great generation of leaders coming. Yes. Now that's the only focus, and I realized that one scripture that motivates me all the time is uh, 2 Corinthians 5 14, Christ's love compels us that we shouldn't be living for ourselves, yes. the one who will die. You know, and that's a challenge we took it, I think, uh, to, uh, to the ministry on February. And believe me that, you know, when we start reaching out to the teens and getting time with every individual and asking about the stories of the coming to church, how people say, how long have you come to church? I've been coming from the time my mother was conceived. So, from the womb, I've been coming to church. <laughs> <laughs> and people say, 10 years, 12 years, 13 years. And I said, it's also the purpose why you come to church. Because my family is coming, I'm also joining. <laughs> So there's no real purpose, they are the sheep without the shepherd and real no clue about what is that they have 
That's uh, right. the, the days to come. come on. Uh, getting them to know about God is really challenging. Now, I, I have to unlearn certain things from this mature group to come and take this elementary <laughs> students. So I have to really go back to the basics again, getting the different tactics of these. So it's a different group, and I really enjoy it. I think my wife has really been supportive about it. And uh, now one thing that I try to see the need is, parents, everybody and ask them, the teens parents, what do you want to do with my... Uh, bro, why, why are they getting baptized? No? They've been coming for so many years. Why are they getting baptized? That's the desire every parent <coughs> has for the team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I see that a lot of expectation parents said, no, my teen has to be like this, and all those things. The same way, what I realize is that teen has a great expectation from the parents as well. Yeah. yeah. And that is not meant, therefore, they're not coming forward to make a decision to accept Christ. Right. So, uh, what me and my wife and also the mentors uh, in our ministry are doing is reaching out to the family, having a sitting for a couple of hours to understand what is the gap and what is, what is going wrong, why are they connected. And I think this is it's a trial approach to reach God. It's, it's the mentors and as well as the parents work together, take them to God. Yes. And that's what we realized it. And, and, and every parent I meet, I said, let's work together. It's a team effort. They got to make a decision to accept Lord. Only then it's possible. So we're visiting these families, understanding what the gaps are, trying to fix those, until the way gaps are, and ex expecting the parents and the teams to make efforts to fix it. Awesome. So only they identify what the problems are. And that's what we've been doing with this, uh, you know, each families and visiting it. I think that really helped uh, you know, to get more bonded with the family. and. And also we get a lot of support from the parents as well. And that way that our jobs are not burdened uh, in, in reaching out to these teens as well. So the last week with, with that, uh, all the people reaching out into the family, there was one sister, teen, who got baptized right in Pratna Mandara last Sunday. That was a great victory. And I and listening to the sharing of the parents, they're so touched, they're so moved. And said, like, well, without the mentors being involved in the life, and they're so not involved in the life, I don't think so my daughter would accept it this time and accept Jesus my Lord. So he was so touched and I was thanking all of the people who got involved in Dean's life. So I believe that it is in a team effort. So what I have request brothers is that if you have a team in your region, in your sector, please take some time to spend time with them. One appointment, you've got to pray with them, feed them some food, teach them the scripture, and only then you could collectively you can take them to God. And that's a great victory that we could do. Jesus is saving us all. Thank you so much. Fantastic.